from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Micah Show. You was all wrong, Skippy. And now, here he is, Tom Micah. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Micah Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No! I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of the program. Here we are together again on the radio. How would you like to have this problem? Margaret writes in and says, Tom, I wanted to start out by saying I love listening to your show. So does my boyfriend. However, I never thought I'd be writing in and asking for your opinion about something. Just yesterday, my 33-year-old boyfriend of eight months told me he had sexual relations with other guys when he was a young adult, ages 18 and 19. I was so shocked. I didn't immediately say anything, but later I told him it was on my mind and I was disgusted about it. I guess I want your opinion on it since I really don't know what question to ask. I just know that it's been on my mind and I have so many mixed feelings. Your opinion would be greatly appreciated. Thanks, Margaret. Before I answer your question, Margaret, I want to make something very clear to our audience. Uh, Long-time listeners know that I am not a homophobe in any way, shape, or form. I have no problem with uh, gays and lesbians, none. I have many friends who fall into those categories. I live in a neighborhood that is largely gay. Homosexuality is part of the diversity of the city of Los Angeles and with all the jokes we make about diversity training and all the things they make you go through at work. The reality is, I like living in a city that is diverse. I like it. I like many races. I like all sexual orientations uh, to be together. I like uh, uh, the national origins to be together. I, I like all of that. I like the events. I like the cuisines. I like, you name it, I like uh, what you get when you live in a soup like this. Instead of living in some place in the middle of nowhere where everybody's the same, I like that. That's what I like about living in a city. So uh, the fact that someone is gay or lesbian is of no consequence to me at all. Unless I'm dating them. And then it's an issue. But not because I'm a homophobe. Here's the reason. And I've said this on the air before. It is my belief that unless you had that one back rub in college that so many women especially have had, you know what I'm talking about, right? I've referred to this on the air before. Two girls share a dorm room, and they uh, know each other for a while, and they uh, meet each other's various uh, dates and boyfriends and what have you. They're far away from home. Maybe they uh, both live in other cities. So they uh, form a bond. They're in the same room. They start listening to some of the same music. They start drinking the same jug wine. On any given Friday night, one is home or the other. Rarely both. They're usually out uh, going out on a date or going out with friends or whatever. And for whatever reason, maybe it's a holiday week and uh, they decided not to go home for the holidays or Maybe uh, just by some quirk in the schedule or coincidence, the two girls are home together Friday night. And so one of them puts on the Michelle Branch CD, and the other breaks out the bottle of jug wine, and the two of them are sitting there talking, drinking a little jug wine, maybe smoking a little weed. 
maybe later in the evening, they get talking about whether each of them has ever been with a woman. And uh, as I've heard this story told to me by so many women, frequently one roommate or the other has more experience with this or is more interested in it, or maybe one roommate reveals to the other, hey, guess what, I'm actually a lesbian, whatever. And enough uh, wine has passed each, is, uh, each person's lips, and uh, enough uh, weed is in the air, and uh, suddenly it starts off with a back rub, and it goes on from there, and bing, bang, boom, suddenly by the next morning, these two women have had an experience together that maybe will never happen again. They just did it. There's, oh, my God, I was drunk. I can't believe I did that. And, of course, we know that's what women say every time they have sex in the United States. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, my God, I had a few shots. One thing led to another, and suddenly I was riding this guy like a pony. You know how women are, and it's the same thing when they have that, um, when they have that one lesbian experience. That, that's what they say. All right. Now, it is my belief that um, somebody who's done that probably, and I say probably, not necessarily definitely, but probably will not do it again. I think we all experiment uh, to one extent or another when we're young. We all do things that later on we say, God, I can't believe I did that. We do it with drugs. We do it with sex. We do it with... Um, our careers, we do lots of things that are dumb when we're young, or things we regret, or things we just wanted to try out, and then we say, nope, not doing that anymore. So if somebody had an experience like that, I wouldn't call them bisexual or anything. They just, uh, they had an experience, they tried something, maybe it worked for them that particular evening, but uh, they said, oh my God, I could never do this again, blah, blah. All right? But when somebody actually identified at one point in time as gay, or if uh, as a man, um, if I'm dating somebody, and I, by the way, I've done it. I dated a woman who not only had identified as lesbian, but her previous roommate was her former lover. I met her when she was living with a roommate who had been her lover at one time. And now her lover was off with some other woman, and uh, she was dating me. But I must tell you that um, my experience has been the following, and I, um, I've never dated men, so I, you know, maybe there are women out there who've had this experience. But it's my experience that women who have identified in the past as gay or lesbian or bisexual or whatever, can never put a lid on that other part of their personality. At some point, they're going to need to express that, either by suggesting a threesome, and of course most guys go, woohoo, that's great. But um, I have to imagine that as a woman, the last thing you want is your boyfriend or husband coming home and suggesting you bring another man into the mix, and that you want to watch the two of them go, uh, go on at it. I doubt that you would ever want to do that. My opinion, and again, I maybe I don't have as much experience as some of the people who might call in at 1-800-5800-TOM. My experience has been once bisexual or once gay. It's always in there. When I say once, I don't mean one time. I mean at one time. At one time you said, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. And then two years later you said, you know what, I'm not gay, I'm straight. Or, I'm not gay, I'm bi. Whatever. That part of your personality is always in there. You may not act on it for years, but it's there. And at some point, you're going to want to act on it again. And so what I would say to Margaret, who wrote the email, is my opinion is that this may be a great guy, a nice guy, a good guy, but if he spent two years walking around, uh, you know, West Hollywood or Greenwich Village, or wherever he was walking around with his buddies, and then he uh, suddenly decided after two years, of, oh, yeah, I'm gay, I'm gay, I'm gay. Now, now he's like, well, I'm not gay. That, that's always in there. It's always in there. It never comes out. And I believe that when you try to put a lid on part of your personality, whatever it might be, okay, you're a boozer, you're a, you like to experiment with drugs, 
you are a compulsive personality, whatever. When you try to put a lid on that, you can put a lid on it. But at some point, it's going to squirt out. You know, you can put a pot on boil and put a lid on it. But at some point, the lid is going to blow off. It is. Do you disagree? Tom. Tom, Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Do you have a nice rack? <laughs> uh, you would like to know, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. And what would that do for you? I'd probably pitch a tent here in the studio. The Tom Likey Show. Like it on Hot Talk 1080 KOTK. Remember, Tom, Margaret writes in, it says that her boyfriend have eight months... 33 years old, just admitted that uh, when he was 18 and 19 years old, he had sex with other guys. She's shocked. She doesn't know what to do. What would you do if you were her? What would you do? 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah, hey, Tom. What's happening? Uh, just doing a radio show here, John. Excellent, excellent. Um, I just got to say, I completely agree with you, man. It's, it's always true. Every, anytime you go and quit something, you always go back to it. And it seems to me, not only do you go back to it, but you go back to it with some vengeance. Well, it's just like most of the people who, most of the people who lose 100 pounds on a diet gain back 125. I mean, exactly. people, right. no matter what you try to stop doing, eventually you start doing it again. Yep. And not only do you start doing it, it's like your subconscious is telling you to make up for lost time. You know, you go back at it, you quit drinking, you're drinking two, three times a week. You quit for a month, you go back at it, you're drinking for two weeks straight. Uh huh. Something like that, you know. Basically, you're just trying to make up for lost time. It's always, you're always going to go back to it. You can't change yourself after a certain point. Yeah, it's like if somebody came to you and said, you know, I was once an alcoholic. Hello. Yeah. Hey. Come on. Hey, right on. Hi, right. I want to say, Tom. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. It's Ruth on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom? Ruth! Hey, what's happening? Not much. Um, no, I was just gonna comment on the, uh, about if a, that a girl would be pissed off if her, um, husband brought home another man. Yeah, wouldn't you be, uh, wouldn't, uh, not just pissed, you wouldn't. No. You would like to see your, is it your boyfriend? My fiance. Your fiance. You would like to see your fiance getting on with another guy? I would, it wouldn't bother me. Would you like to see it? Yeah. You would? Has, has he ever been with a man before? Um, I don't know. But he, um, you don't know. Him. You didn't ask him that. Well, I mean, that's that's personal. But um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Doesn't he ask you about your past at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure and do you is. tell him? Yeah. Well, if that's not too personal, why would it be well, too personal to ask your own fiance if he's ever been with a man? Well, um, we check out men and women together, so it's kind of good. Except I just. But that doesn't it. look. You can check out anything you want, but the question is, has he ever been with a man? Yeah, it sounds like you suspect maybe he was. Oh, well, yeah, he probably was. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. You wouldn't doubt it. No. And uh, tell me why you think that. Um, I don't know. I mean, just because we check out girls and guys together, so I imagine he probably would. I mean, we're thirty-one years old. I'm, you know, at some point, maybe he was. And you don't even want to know if your boyfriend uh -huh. has ever been entered from behind. You don't even want to know that. Um, I mean, if he told me, I mean, it, it wouldn't... But like, come on! I, I mean, wouldn't trip out on I, it. This is the thing I do not understand about relationships, okay? What? This is going to be the love of your life, allegedly. Uh -huh. This is supposed to be your best friend. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I'm not going to say over the radio whether or not he told me or not or whatever. You you're know. anonymous, Ruth. We don't know you. Come on, tell us the truth. Did he tell you he's been with men? Mm. Yeah, he did, didn't he? I don't know. Come on. No comment. Ruth, you're anonymous. I don't even know if your name is Ruth. <laughs> I don't even know who you are. I know. We don't know what his name is. We have no idea. True. You're not breaking any confidences. You're completely anonymous. Yeah. So uh, he told you that, huh? Uh, well, we talked, so that's and, all I'm going to say. You, uh, yeah, all right. So you know that he has been with men. How recently uh, did that? Does he still do it? No, I don't. I have no idea. How? I don't know what he does. I mean, I, I come to work, he stays home with our daughter. So you you go to work and he stay. Oh, and he's a house husband too. Yeah. Oh boy, does he drive a, a red Jeep? Mm, no. A rainbow sticker? No, no, I don't know. All right, just check. <laughs> a rainbow sticker? <laughs> that would be a hint. That would be a clue. Does he that has he clue. has he ever driven a Mazda Miata? I don't know. He he can't drive. He he drinks. He can't drive. Yeah. Does he like to do poppers? What's that? 
You know, like... Uh... <laughs> I just wanted to comment on that. Amyl or butyl nitrate? Has he ever done that? What? Has he ever done amyl or butyl nitrate? <laughs> These are Maybe? telltale signs that your boyfriend might have been gay at one time or another. <laughs> hey, if he was gay at one time... If the guy knows the terms locker room or rush. Chances are... Oh, I know that. Yeah. You know, you know about that, too. Yeah. Did you do it with your boyfriend? Excuse me? Did you do it with your fiancé? What, locker room? Yeah. No, but I've seen it around the house one time. Seen it around the house! <laughs> oh, my I God. I think we know what we need to know. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. Well. Do you guys have any pets? No. No. Oh, what, gerbils? No, not gerbils. I was thinking of, like, cats. No. Oh, uh, yeah, not no more, though. Why? Oh, he had a cat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just checking. All right, Tom. See, now you're losing me. I, how am I losing you? <laughs> Does your boyfriend like uh, Art Deco? Well, of course. <laughs> I think we know what we need to know. Okay. Anybody who lives in L.A. knows that Art Deco is the mayor of West Hollywood. <laughs> okay. That's his name, Art Deco. Well, I just wanted to call and comment on that. Well, I wouldn't mind. You, you wouldn't mind, but see, you already know he's been gay and or he's bisexual or whatever. Yeah. You already know that, and so... You, but have you ever been with him and another man? No. Now, here, all right. Let, uh, so, look, you've copped to it. So let, let me ask you this. Right. Uh, look, if this is the guy you're, you're going to be with the rest of your life, allegedly. And you've uh -huh. already had a baby with him. Uh-huh. Which is probably why you had to give up the gay lifestyle, because he knocked you up, and now you had to move in with you and take care of you. Probably. Uh, okay. So, um, come on. You can't talk to him about it? You can't, like, ask the man of your dreams? Oh, I can ask you. It's, talk about a lot of Prince Charming, why, for God's sake. This is the man of your dreams. You can't ask him. him. You love him. Yeah. So you can't ask him anything? Oh, yeah, I can ask I mean, him. To me, you should anything. be able to ask anything. I can ask anything to him. Oh, why don't but you ask him about... Uh, his past? About uh, being entered from behind. Why don't you ask him about it? What's that like? What's it like? <laughs> well, you, maybe you know what it's like, but uh, <laughs> how often do you date a man who knows what it's like? Mm -hmm. I guess not very often for girls. Well, I don't know. Not for girls. I mean, bisexual is bisexual, but if you were just straight up gay at one time, that's different. Uh, but was he straight up gay at one time or he was just bi? I don't know. You don't, you don't know? I don't both? know if he was straight up gay at one time. How can you not ask these questions? I don't think he'd tell me the truth either. anyway. So the, the man of your dreams, Prince Charming, would lie to you? Probably. <laughs> what kind of man of your dreams is that? It's just a man of my dreams. So, uh, has he ever suggested bringing another man home? Uh, no, not in so many words. Not in so, what do you mean, not in so many words? <laughs> I can't say that stuff. Maybe someone is listening. Oh, so in other words, he has brought it up to you. <laughs> I mean, did he suggest, you know, I'll stop off on the way home, pick up some poppers, and then uh, we'll all get together and... Uh, me and uh, an ex of mine and you, mm -hmm. and you can watch the two of us going at it. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if he would ever, like, be that bold as to confess anything like that. So you're with a man that you don't even know everything about. No, I, I don't think. I don't, I don't know if I do or don't. You know, that's weird. We've been together, like, seven years, too. Oh, boy. You think he's done anything while he's been with you? I don't know. Oh, well, we had, he had some friends across the street. They were all... Oh, I'll bet he did. The Tom Likas Show. This is the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show, indeed, at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's the telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. We are talking about a letter we received from Margaret, who uh, just found out that her 33-year-old boyfriend of eight months told her that uh, when he was 18, 19 years old, he had sexual relations with guys. <laughs> Robert on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Robert. How you doing? Pretty good. Hey, I agree with everything you're saying there, my man. Mm -hmm. uh, some years back, back in the late 90s, I was... Uh, running around with a gal who I did not know was bisexual and had been seeing her off and on for, I don't know, it's been about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Well, one day in the middle of the street down here at the Pike Place Market in Seattle, which you probably know that area. I do. Um, crossing the street after being at the market, and I run into her and some other guy, and I, 
got to be careful when I say it. I'm, I'm not sure what words I can say on the phone here. But well, we'll bleep you if we have to. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll just tell it to you the way it happened. I hear this guy yell out, Pussy Galore. I go, what the hell's that? You know? That's a name from a James Bond movie. Well, there you go. That's where this is going. Well, I had no idea. It's this guy standing next to me. It's about six foot five and, I don't know, 235. Biker looking dude. Wow. Just another goofball down here at the market, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, he does it again. I thought, God, you know, I probably just had to turn around and walk away here. Well, the light turns and I sort of let him walk ahead of me. Well, lo and behold, if I don't run into this gal right smack in the middle of the street, and these two start striking up a conversation and she sees me there and she goes, Oh, hi. Hi, Rob. How you doing? Got, you know, I'm kind of spellbound and and again, this big dude looks at me and he goes, hey, who in the hell are you? And I go, oh, well, I'm a friend of hers. And he goes, oh, yeah, well, you don't look like her type. You're not big enough. You know, you're only whatever you are, five, six, and blah, blah, blah. And she's six foot. And, well, anyway, um, he goes, how do you take care of this gal? He goes, you know, she gets more than you and me combined. Oh, Yeah. Really? Now, we, we couldn't say that word in that context, so we'll just say action. There you go. Okay. Or chicks. There you go. Yeah. Uh, chick action. There we go. Well, anyway, I got, whoa. Uh, I, I look, kind of looked at her, and I said, was well, that right? And she goes, well, I don't know. I can't keep track, so keep track of everybody's sex life. You know, I keep track of my so own. This, this is how you found out this woman was bisexual? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and... You know, after the whole scenario here, the next time I saw her, which was about well, four or five days later, I said, you know, hey, why didn't you let me know? Well, you never asked. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, aren't you worried that you're going to, like, be walking down the street one day and that uh, something like this would happen? I mean, I, shouldn't people reveal that stuff if they're going to be with you more than once or twice? Well, yeah, I sort of thought, so I have to tell you, it took me back, and. You know? And I asked her about it, you know, I said, well, you know, have you, is this something that's always been? And she goes, well, yeah. She says, you know, I've always been kind of confused about this. You know, sometimes when I'm with guys, I think of girls. When I'm with girls, I think of guys. And, and it's kind of like, you know, it's just in I don't know if it's a genetic DNA. Hardwired or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So what happened? Well, it ends up this gal, I mean, we sort of saw each other for, I don't know, it must have been about another six, eight months. She ended up getting, she got pregnant. Married another guy, and I guess she's living happy ever after or whatever. Or she's uh, married another guy, but she's banging chicks on the side. And, and, and I, would, I would venture to say that's, that's my expectation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know. So, But I, I was just absolutely stunned. So if you were Margaret, what would you do? If I was Margaret? Yeah. I'd probably say, hey, this guy... Is not going to quit seeing guys. Yeah. Based on what I know, mm -hmm. you know, I don't, I can't think of it from the you know the guy end of that because I've never really gone there. But, but I'd tell her, I'd say, hey, I don't think, I think it's a DNA hardwired thing, and it's not going to change. Yeah. And that you better get used to that at some point, like you said about the boiling pot. You know, sooner or later, you know, the lid's going to blow off. Mm hmm And I absolutely think that's a hundred percent true. I totally agree with you. God, I'm just thinking about that. Yikes. Wow. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. More of your telephone calls are coming up. The Tom Likey Show. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. It's Lloyd on the Tom Likey Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lloyd. How you doing? Great. Right on. Well, I just wanted to call in and tell you about uh, an experience with my wife and I. Uh, for the first few years when we were dating and having our little ex explorations, uh, we had three sons. And with who? With men or women? Uh, mostly women, but we did have a couple with a couple of guys. So are you bi, too? No, I'm not. So when there was a guy in there, were you uh, in on the action? Or were you just yeah. watching? You were. Yeah. That that was about as far as I could go with uh, seeing another man naked. Uh-huh. But, uh, 
but she's Definitely. but she's bisexual. Yeah. Well, what she, makes you think that somebody who's bisexual is going to stop being bisexual? You know, I never expected her to stop, but uh, it's been three years now. And I'm well, proud you're only 24. Is she younger than you? Uh, we're both 24. 24 is not that old. No, not at all. So that was why we started, you know, exploring, you know, when we were dating, because we knew we weren't going to, we didn't want to spend the rest of our lives together if we hadn't had a chance to, you know, see what else was out there. So you're not the least bit worried about the possibility that uh, she'll start having a taste for that again? Well, she may. And it really doesn't bother me because the experiences were, uh, even even the ones that I wasn't involved with. All right. uh, she had her girlfriend that, you know, she just enjoyed, you know, having an afternoon. Yeah, but what, what is the point of getting married if you don't have a monogamous relationship? Well, why be married? Well, that's probably a pretty good question. All right, give me a good answer. Uh, we've been together for a while, and uh, I don't see myself being with anyone else as far as, you know, spending the rest of my life with them. Uh, she feels the same to the best of my knowledge, and uh, she's the one I want. Yeah, but uh, you know what? Uh, she might want you, and she might want others, too. What kind of marriage is that? Well, a lot of my friends and family don't understand it either. And there have been occasions over the past few years that I didn't understand and I wasn't sure where we were going. But it's something I've come to, you know, be a part of my life. Uh, we haven't had any, you know, experiences, threesomes or anything like that in a mm -hmm. uh, few years now. But, you know, I realize that it's a possibility, you know, and she may be interested sometime, but so far she hasn't mentioned it. Uh, yeah, do, you, sure. do you ask her about it? Oh, yeah, we have, we talk about it. And we she says she's not interested, or she says she's not interested right now? Uh, it's just been plain not interested. She had her fun and, you know, explored her options, and that was pretty much it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you wouldn't do it again, or would you? Uh, the thought exploded in my head, but as far as whether or not I could say definitely yes, I'm not sure. But if it was something that she really wanted, well, then, yeah. All right, Lloyd. Well, thank you for that. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Alex on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going? All right, Alex. Hey, I just was calling. I don't know the whole story. I didn't hear the whole radio show, but I just... Well, I'll tell you very simply, all right, so then you'll be up to speed. Here. Margaret, a listener, wrote in and said that uh, just yesterday, after dating this guy for eight months... Her 33-year-old boyfriend said to her that when he was 18 and 19 years old, he had sex with other guys. And that she was so shocked, she doesn't know what to do. And you don't agree with the fact that, that, that he can't have that, those desires any longer? I believe that unless it was a one-time thing, if you went around identifying as gay or bi or lesbian at one time or another, in my opinion, it's always in there. Okay, because I, I disagree with you because by personal experience, I, as I was telling your screener, I told him that I had an experience with my cousin at the age of 13. He came on to me. An experience. Well, it was more than an experience. We, we, it started off at age of 13 messing with each other. We both got erections. One thing led to another, and we ended up, you know, doing each other. How often? Uh, I would say probably once every six or seven months. Once every six or seven months, you were uh, having sex with your cousin. Right. For your male four, cousin. For about four years. For about four years. Correct. Uh -huh. and, and now I've been married for a while. I have kids, and I have no desire. And, and desire. your wife is aware of this? Yes. And she uh, isn't concerned about it? No, because I told her it was an ex I don't know why I did it at that age. I mean... I must have been turned on. I had an erection. But pal, pal, four years of diddling your cousin is not experimentation anymore. Well, in your opinion, I mean, how long? Oh, you're saying... After a while, you know, it's like the people who say, I experimented with pot. You know what experimenting is? You took one toke, you fell down, you, 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 you were unconscious, and you said, that's it, I'm not doing this again. But four years is no longer experimentation. Right. I'm not, I didn't really experiment. I it's a cop-out to say that you were experimenting. 
Okay, so I did an experiment. I was do actually doing it. Then you went beyond the experimentation uh, process. You went right into the field. I agree. But my point is that now, after you know, 20 years, I have no desire whatsoever. Well, why did you stop? I just didn't want to do it anymore, <laughs> and I didn't have that desire anymore, and I just moved on with life. So when you see your cousin at Thanksgiving dinner, how is that? It's it's like move on. We didn't. We don't look at each other and even bring it up or anything. We just move on, you know. It, it, it was something that happened for four years, and we both enjoyed it, I, I guess. But now it's not. It's I, he has never come on to me again, and I don't even mention it. Is he married? Uh, yeah. He is. Yes. And have you ever discussed that again? No, we never have. It's never been brought up again. Just dropped it. Not once. And have you ever had uh, thoughts about uh, doing this kind of thing again? No, I never have. Not one time. Not once. Really? Yeah. So that's why this Four years! <laughs> and, yeah. and were you dating girls at the time, too? No, not during that time, I wasn't. So you were gay? Right. I wasn't dating at that time. I am, of course, I did after that, and I am married now. Hang on a second, Alex. Brian, what do you want to say to Alex here? Hey, uh, you know what? Once you do it once, especially for four years, you can always do it, pal. You hit on that cousin today, he will be glad to oblige and go with you again. That's the way it is. I know I'm speaking from personal experience. Well, if, even, if, even, if, even if you would want to do it, I'm, my point is that I don't. That's my point. You may not want to, but you've been there before. You'd probably do it again. It's kind of like that ex-girlfriend or that ex-boyfriend that you have that you've no. banged once. You'll no. bang again down the road. Sorry. Don't tell me what I would want to do. I'm telling you for a fact. You what can... if you were at a party and you had a few drinks? Mm-hmm. I've been at a party with a few drinks with him. And, and what happened? happened? What happened? Nothing. nothing. Oh, come on. Zero. Tell us the truth. We don't know who you are. You know you've done it, but done it more times than that. Come on. Okay. Okay. So, anyways, I can go on and argue with this guy, but I know the facts. I'm not going to lie. I'm not. Gonna, you're just calling to try and argue with me to make the make the show more popular. I'm telling you, the, the show truth. couldn't be more popular, pal. Not with our argument. Okay, whatever. Anyways, I'm telling you, Tom. I can go on forever. It's not a part of my life any longer, and I have absolutely no desire to go. That so way. you would say that Margaret has nothing to worry about. Uh, I don't know for sure with him because, like this, like your caller that's on the line trying to get me provoked. It could be true. There probably are guys that still think that way. Me, personally, I don't. So if Margaret's don't man did it one time, then she should stay with him. If he did it more than once and made a career out of it or a lifestyle out of it, then Margaret needs to investigate a little more bit than, further. It was more than more. one guy It was in the when he was 18 and 19 years old. Uh huh. He was a full adult. He knew full well what he was doing. Margaret needs to realize she's with a gay or bisexual man. Lots of men will hide and say, oh, yeah, I did it once then. I did it once. We were drunk, blah, 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 and uh, not thinking that that makes them gay. You know, they're afraid to be gay. They're married. They got kids, things like that. Big deal. I see this every single day in my line of work. Oodles and oodles of men that are married, that have been with men forever and ever and still with men. They have women. They have families, all that stuff, but they still prefer to be with a man.